want, but how cool do these cars look? They've got these things painted up like these guys drove in their heyday and uh, really good looking race cars. About 200 pounds heavier than last year's cars that they drove, which were late model stocks. These are uh, Pro Cup cars from the Hooters Pro Cup series. And what the guys are trying to do now is form up into a four wide salute to the fans and that's a pretty cool deal. That is a pretty cool deal. They got to be careful doing that. So <laughs> good luck with that. That's pretty tight. Uh, pretty tight quarters out there to try something like that. Looks like they're going to pull it off though. We won't be giving them any ideas here for four wide racing. They see that it is possible to get four wide on here. They don't need to do that at speed. I think they all understand that. The youngest in the field is Phil Parsons at the age of 52. And uh, the oldest, Jack Ingram, at the age of, no, David Pearson, I should say, at the age of 75, Jack 73. One thing I've noticed about these guys talking to them earlier is that they really, you know, they all say we're here to put a show on, but I will promise you, Dale, they was, these guys all want to win. I know L.D. Adinger was strong, you know, Jack Ingram, Harry Gant, and we saw that real fast lap earlier out of Harry Gant, 16-20. Very fast lap. Hey, they might be older now, but they haven't lost that competitive spirit. And when they get in these race cars, they want to go as fast as they can make the car go. All right, we've got an onboard camera with uh, Harry as our in-race reporter, and there he is with no gloves. <laughs> that's a NASCAR violation well, uh, these days. Open face helmet, that's what they used to drive, the bubble goggles. Uh, hey, we both drove those type of helmets before in the past, that's for sure. And well, you're bringing right. back a lot of memories here. He hasn't aged a bit. Look at him. I'm telling you, if you'd walk up to him on the street, you'd say, my gosh, this, this is back when Harry Gant was winning races in the late 80s and early 90s in the Cup Series. 70 years old. We mentioned the fact these cars are 200 pounds heavier, 150 more horsepower than last year's car, but they are running a different tire than uh, they're running a BF Goodrich tire instead of what we would normally see in NASCAR with a Goodyear. Yeah, and I watched one of these races, the BF Goodrich is here a couple years ago, and the tires really stuck good. They were fast. They run all day long, over 200 laps. So they're on a really good tire, and they got really aerodynamic cars. And like you said, I mean, they, they things are really prepared well and, and fast cars. Two more pace laps, and then we will go green for 35 green flag laps here on the world's fastest half mile as uh, the man behind the wheel of the pace car, Junior Johnson. There he is. That's really cool. The, cool, the car's pretty cool, too. That's yeah, a, that Ford Sunliner, uh, that, that was a gorgeous. great car. Dale, I think one thing I'm a little concerned about is for David Pearson. I mean, a lot of guys are left foot breakers and right foot breakers. This particular car he's driving, he was just telling us it looks like it's set up for left foot braking, and that's going to give him a problem. Yeah, if you haven't done that, and a lot of cars that are built this day and time, unless you build them another way, are built for drivers to, to use that left foot. But most of these guys came up through racing using just one foot on the brake and the gas. We mentioned Junior Johnson driving the pace car. He raced in this event last year up on the tower who will be waving the green flag will be a four-time Bristol winner there he is Bobby Allison and that guy right there was my mentor he taught me a lot about racing used to race in Birmingham Alabama go to his race shops and he was one of the guys first guys to invent the front steer steering system on these race cars he's a real innovator 84 career wins a legend in the sport and a bunch of legends out on the racetrack and there is the trophy that goes to the winner here at the end of 35 laps. Sit back and enjoy, folks. Relive some of your favorite memories as it is L.D. Ottinger bringing them down on the inside of the front row with the number six of Tommy Houston right alongside. And we're green at Bristol. Boy, and L.D. says, see ya, fellas. And I'll tell you, we talked last year, if you watched, happened to watch the race, how fast he was as he got more used to driving these cars around this racetrack. This race last year, I finished second, and LD was really running me down big time. In fact, a couple more laps, I was going to get past. But this guy is really good here at Bristol, the old racetrack, and a lot of these guys are just until, hey, pass off a of turn two. Jack Ingram sticking his nose in there trying to pass Tommy Houston. And Boy, that's been said a lot of times. <laughs> and Harry Gant in the 33 right behind him there. And right now, it's a battle for second spot because LD has checked out. I thought Harry was going to try to make that top side. Here comes Rick Wilson up on the top trying to pass Harry Gant. Now, Harry Gant in his past career has always been known to run on the top side of the racetrack. Gets a lot of momentum up there. And Harry's going to stay in the top. It looks like he's trying to make it work. Harry in the 33. The 11 is Jack Ingram. The six car forces Tommy Houston. 
Then a little bit further back, you can see the 75. That's Rick Wilson as he's trying to work his way up. Also the 71 of Dave Marcus and the 66 of Phil Parsons. Now I think LD slowed down a little, let these boys catch up. He wants to race. He's not here just to go out and run laps, 35 laps around here. He wants to race a little bit. I know these guys are running tight right now. They're just really feeling their cars out. I mean, it's going to take a little bit. It's going to take 10 or 15 laps because like Harry Gantz said, he only had five laps of practice in this car. Yeah, well, LD better get on it now because Harry's liking that high groove. Yeah, remember. Here he comes with yeah, Wilson. He's got the outside line, and he's going for the pass. And here he is on the high side. And Harry Gant, the oldest winner in Sprint Cup Series history, takes the lead. And all of a sudden, LD has drifted back to third. The second is Rick Wilson. Now, Rick's won here before. He's been strong at this racetrack in the past. And he wants this win bad. And see if he's going to try to top of the track. Harry's guarding him up there. Harry was 52 years, seven months, and six days old when he won in Michigan in August of 92, the oldest Sprint Cup race winner. A little bit behind these guys, Jack Ingram finally did get around the six of Tommy Houston. You see Larry Pearson coming yeah. on the inside there. I raced a lot against Larry Pearson coming up through in the Bush Series. See the Silver Fox David Pearson right there in 17th. We talked earlier about the problem with the break, but here's a pass for the lead, Rick Wilson. And Wilson is going to take over the top spot as we have had now 10 green flag laps under our belt here at Bristol. And these guys are running some very good speeds. I mean, 117 miles an hour for the last lap. Watching lap times around, like you said, 1630. Oh, tough break for Cale Yarborough. He's, he has an uh, engine smoke, and uh, they are bringing him into pit road. So uh, Cale will likely not finish as the window net comes down. Tough break. Oh, man, I hate to see that. I really want to see Cale run. I mean, he wanted to win this thing bad, that's for sure. See Phil Parsons there trying to get around L.D. Ottinger. They get battled a lot in the, the Bush series back in the 80s. I tell you what, <laughs> Dale, it's hard to call this race because I, I find myself just watching it because I, I appreciate what these guys are doing. And it was so much fun racing them when you and I were able to do that with them. Well, let's get an update on what happened to Cale Yarborough, Doc. Well, Cale Yarborough said as he, when they dropped the wave of the green flag, the thing began to tighten up and he got harder and harder and it got tighter and tighter. And obviously these cars are owned by regular pro cup drivers, so he didn't want to take a chance on having the engine come apart. So he just backed it down here and came down pit road. A tough break for a driver who was so excited to be back here and maybe get win number 10 at Bristol. L.D. Ottinger in third and right behind him, Phil Parsons in fourth. As you see on the right side of your screen, Cale getting ready to climb out of the car. Especially what I think you're talking about just watching these guys. What's well, really cool, we kind of grew up, we're at an age that we grew up watching a lot of these guys race, and then we had the opportunity to race with a lot of the guys. I think we finally figured out we raced with and against each one except for Clark Charlie Glotzback. And we've got a caution flag flying as we have debris on the racetrack. And uh, I got to tell you, Two laps ago, Rick Wilson ran 120 miles an hour in that 75 car. The two-time winner in the Nationwide Series, including one win at Bristol, another at Dover, is out in front once again. Here's the pass that put him into the lead as he went underneath Harry Gantt. Stay with us. We still got a lot more fun from here at Bristol Motor Speedway.